Came in here, got the uh, 10 millimeter head. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure they're out. Then it came here, just caught the corner a little bit. Bust it up. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. What we're going to do is, for right now, the wind's died down. But uh, we still don't want any type of dirt getting here. So what I did, I, I got a bunch of old shirts. Because I ran out of rags and everything. And shirts are bigger than rags. I wet them. Let it, let it drip off, all the water. And I'm going to cover this with with wet let's go back before I busted this off there was a little bit of sand not sand but yeah sand and I rinsed it off I got everything rinsed off because I don't want anything getting here I, I wet these because we're outside you don't have to do none of this stuff if you're inside you don't have no dust or anything but we're outside so we gotta do what we gotta do I wet these a little bit and I'm gonna lay them over the top of here so if any dust does get inside here it, it's not gonna get inside here it's gonna come on here and I'll just peel it off going this way and get them out of the way once I want to come in here so that's what we're doing and then now I could take this cover off you have to take off the valve cover because this lip right here this lip sits over here so you can't just take this off so I, I took off the valve cover and then uh, I'm gonna put the valve cover somewhere nice where it's not gonna get dirty and then we're going to come over here and take the 10 millimeter head bolts, take those off lower upper cover, and then go down below and take off the lower cover, and then we could access the timing belt from there. So here it is. I just covered this area. I took out the valve cover gasket and I covered it. So if any dust does get right here, it'll it'll get in here and it won't go through because it's it's a little bit damp. So it acts as like a filter. So I'll grab this and then when it's if there gets any dust here, I'll just peel it off this way and then throw it off that way we don't we eliminate the need of we eliminate the possibility of any dirt getting inside now we're gonna come over here take off this this one and then this one down here down there and then we're gonna uh, pull off the uh, dipstick and then we're gonna go down there and pull off the lower covers and then uh, we'll get the covers off and we'll be able to take a look at the timing belt and make sure it's at top dead center it'll say up here and then we'll have two lines on the sides so let me do that this uh, bolt is a little bit difficult to get to but I came in through the side with a shallow socket it's a 10 millimeter and I come over here and uh, you see it's hidden right there it's a little difficult to get to you can't really get a wrench in there because of the sides are covered by the plastic but uh this combination right here work I came in through the side right here worked it in like this and then went like that and then I could get it now I could probably just break it loose with my fingers yeah a little information for you guys if you come across this that's what I use so that's all you need I took off the cover with the two bolts 10 millimeter head 10 millimeter head 10 millimeter head you wiggle it loose and then I came over here and I got the oil dipstick out and it's it's this connects to the plastic piece on the inside which is right back where is it right back there it connects back there and it holds it over here and so I just wiggled that forward I moved this piece out of the way pushed it and this popped out and then you just wiggle this back and forth you're wiggling, you just wiggle it back and forth and make sure you have the o-ring on it there's the o-ring right there and then wiggle it pull it right out comes right out and what I did because there's still uh, there's still tension on this thing and for you guys that don't have any special tools to hold the, the, the pulley right here or anything I just busted this loose because I have to get back here because so, I gotta get the uh, the seal back here and another thing I want to show you is, uh, let me see, the way we're turning it right here, we could see whether we got pressure. See, it's loose, it's loose, it's loose, it's, they're loose, they're not having pressure on the, on the, uh, the valves right now. And if you see, it says up right here, so I got to actually get it 
up. I got to turn this a little bit more. I'm going to go down there with the crankshaft pulley bolt and turn it all the way to where it has to be. And then, uh, what do you call it? Uh, so, see, these are loose. See how these are? It should be loose. These are tight. See how this isn't moving? This is tight. This is loose. See, it's moving. Loose. That means there's no pressure. And if you actually get close in here, you can actually look at the the lobes to see where the lobes are. But if you look right here, that's loose. It's loose. So on the intake, it's loose. On the exhaust, it's loose. So that means basically it's on the compression stroke. Because if this turns, let me see. Wait. Well, it's just this has to be up. Yeah. Never mind. Just put this up and make sure these aren't loose. That way you know it's on the compression stroke. Top dead center compression stroke. I gotta get this perfectly perpendicular. And then uh, these marks right here, there's a mark right here. I don't know if you can see it. Mark right there. And it's gotta line up too, right here. And then there's another one over here. Right there, it has to line up to the side. And then it says up. It has to line perfectly up. And then we could just go down there. I'm going to take off the uh, lower cover. Looks like they're all 10 millimeter. There's one right here. There's one right here. There's some more down there. Take off that cover. Make sure this is all perfectly top dead center. And then we could start loosening up the uh, tensioner. So let's put this back. Finished taking off the cover. There's one two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one right here that was down here was a little bit difficult to get to just because of the fact if you're looking right here you have to go from here in. But I use this combination right here. A really small what, one inch uh, extension with the semi deep you could probably use that extension with the regular socket. You don't need a deep because the heads are not deep. And that's the total from the top and, and bottom covers. One, two, three, four, five, six from the bottom and then two from the top. And they're all 10 millimeter head. 10 millimeter. But you need something like long like this. Uh, probably a, a deep would have worked. Maybe a deep would have worked, but you, you need it to be about that long in order to get so you gotta get past this thing it's gotta be like that long so that you can move back and forth loosen it and you can get in here take take the extension off of the ratchet and get it by your hand but this combination right here worked for uh, the all the six bottom now we'll come here's the timing belt here's the water pump And uh, what I'm going to do now is make sure it's at top dead center perfectly. I'm going to stick the bolt back in, rotate it to, to make it perfectly top dead center. And uh, I'm going to take out the water pump. Make sure the water, he ordered the water pump online. Sometimes they make mistakes. So what I'm going to do is come over here and make sure that the water pump is the correct water pump. And once I take off the belt, I'm going to make sure the belt, I'm going to, I'm going to check the belt against the new belt before I go trying to put it on and figure hey this thing ain't fitting right I want to check the belts make the belts make sure the belts are the same I want to check the uh, water pump make sure the water pumps the same and uh, I believe if you see that keyway right here I believe it matches up to right there or no let me see yeah I believe the keyway matches up to right there and then this mark right here matches up to over here but you know when you're on top dead center when uh, the top is even it says uh, even to the head and it also says up at a 90 degree angle from one of the, core, the sides of the head so I'm going to stick the bolt in here rotate a little bit or actually yeah, I think i got to rotate a little bit back and I'll mark the belt just in case for any reason if the belt's wrong or if I can't get in I don't want to cut off the belt or anything like that I want to just mark the belt check the belt against the new belt 
if Pushkin the worst, I'm sure they got another one at the store if the one that I have isn't correct. I'm sure the one is correct, but you want to be uh, really safe when you're doing things like this when it's not your car and you don't have a lot of time. I want to make sure the belt is the same belt because if push comes the worst, it was the wrong belt. It was the wrong, they don't have any in the store. I know they would because it's a popular car, but it's just something to think about when you're working on another car. Take the belt off. What happens if it's not the same belt? Then guess what? We'll just put the old belt back until we can get the right parts. I'm sure it is the right belt. I'm sure it is the right water pump because these cars are so popular and they have them in stock all the time. But if you were working on some car that's, you know, maybe like a, a Suzuki, something like that, those parts are harder to come by. They probably don't stock them. I know they don't stock Suzuki parts like all that much. So, you know, if you got the wrong part, you would want to make sure that the belt's the correct belt. You want you don't want to ruin this belt, you know. You want to keep it just And I keep these like uh like for trophies. I keep these, I don't know why I do it. I just like when people say, oh, how many timey belts have you done? I just show them like the, the ones I've collected in the last two years, you know? And it's kind of like a little bit of a trophy for me. I take off the old belt, I keep the old belt. And I got them hanging up. I got a bunch of them hanging up just to show people, well, if he must have done that many, he must know what he's doing. See, if I want to get it dead on, I could use my, uh, my special tool right here. What I do is I put it in here and it turns it from left to right and uh, it's hard this is that's what it's for to get in there and turn it and uh, the thing is uh, you can see the markings on the bottom a little bit better with the timing belt off but once you take the timing belt off then the marks aren't correct now if you see right here you got the uh, you got the mark here has to line up to here but what I do is I come to the back it also has the mark on the back and you can line up the mark let me see. I can see the mark right there. It's right lined up to the head. Where am I? You might not be able to see it real well, but there's a little mark. There it is right there. You see it? Little mark right, right there. And it's lined up right to the head. Right there. See, it's lined up perfectly. See, the mark is lined up right to the head. And then, uh, but over here, it's harder to, to see where you come here, but it, it does line up. But it, there's also one on the back. So you can see it's lined up perfectly to the back. So now we're good. We could loosen up the tensioner and uh, lock it in place. And I, I just use this, this tool coming here. I can move it to whichever way. You can only do this when the belt's still hooked up, though. Because once you loosen the belt, then it's independent from the crankshaft because the belt the crankshaft turns the belt which turns the camshaft if you take off the belt first and go start moving this thing around then it's going to be out of time you don't want to do that you come in there and you loosen that that uh, pulley the tensioner tensioner pulley and uh, it's a 14 millimeter head and I just use this one you could probably use deep or uh, or the regular standard length and then uh, what you do is once you loosen it, you push it down. You push it down a little bit. You see there's a spring here that tensions it. You push down, like with a pry bar. I just use my hand, push down. And then you tighten it. You re-tighten the bolt when you push down. And then I just pulled the belt off from here. Here first, and then it came off. And it came off right from the top. And then... Uh, the belt doesn't look too bad. hasn't been changed in like 80,000 miles, but it, I would change it. I mean, of course we're going to change it. We have a new one. Uh, luckily, he didn't have any uh, oil. You, when you start getting oil and stuff, oil gets uh, acidic because of the uh, exhaust gases, and it'll start eating away at stuff like this. And uh, he doesn't have any oil on that. He probably doesn't have any leaks in the seals. We're going to do them because we have them. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this, take this off. I'm going to go get my special type uh, shaft type seal puller. I got it for like 12, 13 bucks. And then we're going to take that seal out. So let's take this off. And then let's do that first. And then we'll go down there. We'll take off, uh, take off this stuff down here. And then change that seal out. And then uh, we'll do the water pump. 14 millimeter down there for the pulley. So I compared the new belt, this is the new belt, with the old belt, 
and it, it was the, it's the same, it's the correct belt. And then I looked at the water pump, and something important when you're taking the water pump off, look at the new one, you got one, two, three, four, and then five. And then see, I gotta take that one off, it's a 14 millimeter. Right there, I gotta take that off. It's a 14 millimeter head. You see, it, it's this one right there. I gotta take that one off, something I forgot to do take that bracket off so we know we got uh, only five on this to take off and then we want to put a bucket underneath because uh, it's gonna leak a little bit of fluid actually we should just take the fluid out of the uh, radiator let that leak out for a minute and then we come over here and bust this out and then uh, the seals right here there was a little plastic cover held on with one bolt right here 10 millimeter hand bolt little plastic cover and here's the seal right here seals are used in between rotating metal this is not rotating and this is rotating this is to the uh, camshaft so this is rotating this is not rotating inside of here is oil outside of here you do not want oil so what a seal does is seals it from the oil coming out well what happens is oil gets compression gases pushed down through the rings and then the oil starts to deteriorate and get acidic because of the acidic gases and then the, the acidic oil starts to eat away at the seal because it's like rubber so that's why eventually these things no matter how many times you change your oil eventually these things go out and, and you want to change them and uh, you could come in here with the screwdriver you don't want to damage especially any of this right here because this is rotating if it's rotating you scratched it then it's gonna leak oil through here the oil is gonna drop up on the timing belt and then the oil will deteriorate the timing belt and it will break before it should so you want to make sure there's no oil. That's one of the reasons we're doing this is because there is some oil. There's an oil leak and we're worried about the timing belt breaking. And I got this tool right here. This tool specifically for doing this. Pulling this. That's all it does is pull these oils, uh, these seals. And this thing hooks in there. This hooks in there. And you adjust it to push off of something. I'll probably just adjust it to push off the side over here. Push off of here. And it, and it clips in here. It goes in here. And then you pull it back and it just pulls the seal out. And what I'm going to do to install the seal, there's special installer seal tools. I went to the store the other day. I got a bunch of larger sockets at work. I don't have a lot of my larger sockets here. I got a, uh, I got a impact socket set with the larger sockets. And I'm just going to use that to install the seal. So I'm not going to have to loosen anything up here. I'm going to pull this out with the shaft type oil seal. I'm going to put the new seal started off, put a large socket that fits right around it, and tap it in. Oh, by the way, you want to put on the seal on both ends, you want to put like a little bit of oil, clean engine oil, or a little bit of grease. I'll probably use a little bit of grease. And then, uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this seal real quick. I'm going to pull this off using this tool. And you could get this online. I got this for probably like 13, 14 bucks, something like that. And then you pull this seal off. I'm going to pull the seal off, and then I'm going to press the new one in. I'm going to try to show you where I'm pressing what socket and then uh, I'm a, I'm a, at that time I'm going to be draining the coolant there's a, there's a pet cock or whatever it's called down on the radiator and you want to drain the radiator that way when we bust this open a lot of fluid is not coming out and then uh, also in the kit that he got there's a tensioner so we're going to take off this, this uh, pulley tensioner and, and also the, the spring we're going to change those two things also so that should be easy it's just that one bolt holding it on and then we just come in here and uh, with some pliers or something and pull that spring off. Put the new spring, put the new pulley, and uh, so we'll do one thing at a time. So we get this, this is how it's used. It, it comes in, hooks up from the bottom, but I don't have enough room over here to push off of anything because I can't move it. So I'm going to go move it this way. And I'm going to do the same thing underneath. I'm going to hook up. And get up under here. Push up under the seal. And then put this on something you could push off of. this tighten thumb screw and just pull it just come in here 
It hooks up under it and pulls it out. You could use a small screwdriver to do that, but this is specifically what this is used for. See how it holds the oil on the inside while the shaft rotates. And we're going to go come in here and put the new seal. I'll just clean in here a little bit, make sure there's no dust, dirt, or anything that you got in here. Just clean it out a little bit. I got a little bit of grease right here. Just put a little bit of grease. Helps it slide in. You could put a little bit of oil, a little bit of grease. Just want to put it in there nice and even. I've seen guys put it on with their thumbs, but uh, and I also made sure that this is the correct seal. See, we want to get a little bit farther than that. So what we're gonna do is I got this socket. It came in eight piece set. It was like thirty four dollars. I got twenty percent off, and they are professional. Chrome Molly is the good metal. That's what the, the professional like Snap-on uses. They don't say they use it because they don't want them, you to know. But this whole set was like, come out to like 28 bucks. There's eight pieces, three quarter drive. But you know, you could use it for stuff like this. I, I fit it around the 30 fit pretty good. It fits perfectly around the shaft. And I'm going to come in here and get some leverage. Like this. And then uh, I just push. You see that? Push right in there, nice and easy. You can move the roll with leverage. Just like that show, leverage. Make sure it's in there nice and even. Got it in there. I don't want to go too crazy, but see, it's nice. It's in there nice and tight. It's nice and even. We got it in there nice and even. This fit right around there. It goes in there nice. Fit in there nice and even. You want to make sure it's nice and even. Actually, it's a little bit cockeyed. Have to come in here, push a little bit on that side. <clears throat> to, to make it perfectly top dead center and uh, I'm gonna take out the water pump make sure the water he ordered the water pump online sometimes they make mistakes so what I'm gonna do is come over here and make sure that the water pump is the correct water pump and once I take off the belt I'm gonna make sure the belt I'm gonna I'm gonna check the belt against the new belt before I go trying to put it on and figure hey this thing ain't fitting right I want to check the belts. Make the belts. Make sure the belts are the same. I want to check the uh, water pump. Make sure the water pump's the same. And uh, I believe if you see that keyway right here, I believe it matches up to right there. Or no? Let me see. Yeah, I believe the keyway matches up to right there, and then this mark right here matches up to over here. But you know when you're on top dead center, when uh, the top is even, it says uh, even to the head, and it also says up at a 90 degree angle from one of the, core, the sides of the head. So I'm going to stick the bolt in here, rotate a little bit, or actually, 
Yeah, I think I gotta rotate a little bit back. And then I'll mark the belt just in case for any reason if the belt's wrong or if I can't get it. I don't want to cut off the belt or anything like that. I want to just mark the belt, check the belt against the new belt. If push came to worse, I'm sure they got another one at the store. If the one that I have isn't correct, I'm sure the one is correct. But you want to be uh, really safe when you're doing things like this when it's not your car and you don't have a lot of time. I want to make sure the belt is the same belt because if push comes to worse, it was the wrong belt. It was the wrong... They don't have any in the store. I know they would because it's a popular car. But it's just something to think about when you're working on another car. Take the belt off. What happens if it's not the same belt? Then guess what? We'll just put the old belt back until we can get the right parts. I'm sure it is the right belt. I'm sure it is the right water pump because these cars are so popular and they have them in stock all the time. But if you were working on some car that's, you know, maybe like a, a Suzuki, something like that, those parts are harder to come by. They probably don't stock them. I know they don't stock Suzuki parts like all that much. So, you know, if you got the wrong part, you would want to make sure that the belt's the correct belt. You want you don't want to ruin this belt, you know. You want to keep it just... And I keep these like, uh, like for trophies. I keep these. I don't know why I do it. I just, like, when people say, oh, how many timing belts have you done? I just show them, like, the, the ones I've collected in the last two years, you know. And it's kind of like a little bit of a trophy for me. I take off the old belt. I keep the old belt. And I got them hanging up. I got a bunch of them hanging up just to show people, well... If he must have done that many, he must know what he's doing. See, if I want to get it dead on, I could use my uh, my special tool right here. What I do is I put it in here, and it turns it from left to right. And uh, it's hard. This is that's what it's for to get in there and turn it. And uh, the thing is, uh, you can see the markings on the bottom a little bit better with the timing belt off. But once you take the timing belt off, then the marks aren't correct. Now, if you see right here, you got the uh, you got the mark here has to line up to here but what I do is I come to the back it also has the mark on the back and you can line up the mark let me see I can see the mark right there it's right lined up to the head where am I you might not be able to see it real well but there's a little mark there it is right there you see it little mark right right there and it's lined up right to the head. Right there. See, it's lined up perfectly. See, the mark is lined up right to the head. And then, uh, but over here, it's harder to, to see where you come here. But it, it does line up. But it, there's also one on the back. So you can see it's lined up perfectly to the back. So now we're good. We could loosen up the tensioner and uh, lock it in place. And I, I just use this this tool here, and you adjust it to push off of something I'll probably just adjust it to push off the side over here push off of here and it, and it clips in here it goes in here and then you pull it back and it just pulls the seal out and what I'm gonna do to install the seal there's special installer seal tools I went to the store the other day I got a bunch of larger sockets at work I don't have a lot of my larger sockets here I got a uh, I got a impact socket set with the larger sockets and I'm just going to use that to install the seal. So I'm not going to have to loosen anything up here. I'm going to pull this out with the shaft type oil seal. I'm going to put the new seal started off, put a large socket that fits right around it and tap it in. Oh, by the way, you want to put on the seal on both ends, you want to put like a little bit of oil, clean engine oil or a little bit of grease. I'll probably use a little bit of grease. And then, uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to uh, I'm going to do this seal real quick, I'm going to pull this off using this tool, and you could get this online, I got this for probably like 13, 14 bucks, something like that, and then you pull this seal off, I'm going to pull the seal off, and then I'm going to press the new one in, I'm going to try to show you where I'm pressing what socket, and then uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, at that time I'm going to be draining the coolant, there's a, there's a pet cock or whatever it's called, down on the radiator and you want to drain the radiator, that way when we bust this open a lot of fluid is not coming out. And then uh, also in the kit that he got, there's a tensioner. So we're going to take off this, this uh, pulley tensioner and, and also the, the spring. We're going to change those two things also. So that should be easy. It's just that one bolt holding it on. And then we just come in here and uh, with some pliers or something and pull that spring off. Put the new spring, put the new pulley, and uh, so we'll do one thing at a time. 
So we get this, this is how it's used. It, it comes in, hooks up from the bottom, but I don't have enough room over here to push off of anything because I can't move it. So I'm going to go move it this way and I'm going to do the same thing underneath. I'm going to hook up. Get up under here, push up under the seal, and then put this on something you could push off of this tighten thumb screw, and just pull it. Just come in here. It hooks up under it and pulls it out. You could use a small screwdriver to do that, but this is specifically what this is used for. See how it holds the oil on the inside while the shaft rotates. And we're going to go come in here and put the new seal. I just clean in here a little bit, make sure there's no dust, dirt, anything that got in here. Just clean it out a little bit. I got a little bit of grease right here. Just put a little bit of grease. Came in here, got the uh, 10 millimeter head. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure they're out. And it came here. Just cut the corner a little bit, bust it up, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. What we're going to do is, for right now, the wind's died down, but uh, we still don't want any type of dirt getting here. So what I did, I, I got a bunch of old shirts, because I ran out of rags and everything, and shirts are bigger than rags. I wet them, let it let it drip off all the water and I'm gonna cover this with with wet let's go back before I busted this off there was a little bit of sand not sand but yeah sand and I rinsed it off I got everything rinsed off because I don't want anything getting here I I wet these because we're outside you don't have to do none of this stuff if you're inside you don't have no dust or anything but we're outside so we got to do what we got to do I wet these a little bit and I'm gonna lay them over the top of here so if any dust does get inside here it, it's not going to get inside here it's going to come on here and I'll just peel it off going this way and get them out of the way once I want to come in here so that's what we're doing and then now I could take this cover off you have to take off the valve cover because this lip right here this lip sits over here so you can't just take this off so I, I took off the valve cover and then uh, I'm going to put the valve cover somewhere nice where it's not going to get dirty and then we're going to come over here and take the 10 millimeter head bolts, take those off lower upper cover, and then go down below and take off the lower cover, and then we could access the timing belt from there. So here it is, I just covered this area, I took off the valve cover gasket and I covered it. So if any dust does get right here, it'll it'll get in here and it won't go through because it's, it's a little bit damp, so it acts as like a filter. So I'll grab this, and then when it's, if there gets any dust here, I'll just peel it off this way and then throw it off that way we don't we eliminate the need of we eliminate the possibility of any dirt getting inside now we're gonna come over here take off this this one and then this one down here down there and then we're gonna uh, pull off 
the uh, dipstick and then we're going to go down there and pull off the lower covers and then uh, we'll get the covers off and we'll be able to take a look at the timing belt and make sure it's at top dead center it'll say up here and then we'll have two lines on the sides so let me do that this uh, bolt is a little bit difficult to get to but I came in through the side with a shallow socket it's a 10 millimeter and I come over here and uh, you see it's hidden right there it's a little difficult to get to you can't really get a wrench in there because of the sides that are covered by the plastic but uh, this combination right here work I came in through the side right here worked it in like this and then went like that and then I could get it now I could probably just break it loose with my fingers yeah, a little information for you guys if you come across this that's what I use so that's all you need I took off the cover with the two bolts 10 millimeter head 10 millimeter head 10 millimeter head you wiggle it loose and then I came over here and I got the oil dipstick out and it's it's this connects to the plastic piece on the inside which is right back where is it right back there it connects back there and it holds it over here and so I just wiggled that forward I moved this piece out of the way pushed it and this popped out and then you just wiggle this back and forth you wiggle you just wiggle it back and forth and make sure you have the o-ring on it there's the o-ring right there and then wiggle it pull it right out comes right out and what I did because there's still a uh, there's still tension on this thing and for you guys that don't have any special tools to hold the the, the pulley right here or anything I just busted this loose because I have to get back here because so, I gotta get the uh, the seal back here and another thing I want to show you is uh, let me see the way we're turning it right here we could see whether we got pressure see it's loose it's loose it's loose it's they're loose they're not having pressure on the on the uh, the valves right now and if you see it says up right here so I gotta actually get it up I gotta turn this a little bit more I'm gonna go down there with the crankshaft pulley bolt and turn it all the way to where it has to be and then uh what do you call it uh so see these are loose see how these are it should be loose these are tight see how this isn't moving this is tight this is loose see it's moving loose that means there's no pressure and if you actually get close in here you can actually look at the the lobes to see where the lobes are but if you look right here that's loose it's loose so on the intake it's loose on the exhaust it's loose so that means basically it's on the compression stroke because if this turns let me see wait well it just this has to be up yeah never mind just put this up make sure these are loose that way you know it's on the compression stroke top dead center compression stroke I gotta get this perfectly perpendicular and then uh, these marks right here there's a mark right here I don't know if you can see it mark right there and it's got a line up to right here and then there's another one over here right there has to line up to the side and then it says up it has to line perfectly up and then we could just go down there I'm gonna take off the uh, lower cover looks like they're all 10 millimeter there's one right here there's one right here there's some more down there take off that cover make sure this is all perfectly top dead center and then we could start loosening up the uh, tensioner so let's put this back finish taking off the cover there's one two three four five six one two three four five six this one right here that was down here was a little bit difficult to get to just because of the fact if you're looking right here you have to go from here in but I use this combination right here a really small what one inch uh, extension with the semi deep you could probably use that extension with the regular socket you don't need a deep because the heads are not deep and that's the total from the top and, and bottom covers one two three four five six from the bottom and then two from the top
and they're all 10 millimeter head 10 millimeter but you need something like long like this uh, uh, probably a, a deep would have worked maybe a deep would have worked but you, you need it to be about that long in order to get so you gotta get past this thing it's gotta be like that long so that you can move back and forth loosen it and you can get in here take take the extension off of the ratchet and get it by your hand but this combination right here worked for uh, the, all the six bottom now we'll come here's the timing belt here's the water pump and uh, what I'm gonna do now is make sure it's at top dead center perfectly I'm gonna stick the bolt back in rotate it we'll come in here I can move it to whichever way you can only do this when the belts still hooked up though because once you loosen the belt then it's independent from the crankshaft because the belt the crankshaft turns the belt which turns the camshaft if you take off the belt first and go start moving this thing around then it's going to be out of time you don't want to do that you come in there and you loosen that that uh, pulley the tensioner tensioner pulley and uh, it's a 14 millimeter head and I just use this one you could probably use deep or uh, or the regular standard length and then uh, what you do is once you loosen it you push it down you push it down a little bit you see there's a spring here that tensions it you push down like with the pry bar I just use my hand push down and then you tighten it you retighten the bolt when you push down and then I just pulled the belt off from here here first and then came off and it came off right from the top and then uh, the belt doesn't look too bad hasn't been changed in like 80,000 miles but it, I would change it I mean of course we're gonna change it we have a new one uh, luckily he didn't have any uh, oil you, when you start getting oil and stuff oil gets uh, acidic because of the uh, exhaust gases and it'll start eating away at stuff like this and uh, he doesn't have any oil on that he probably doesn't have any leaks in the seals we're gonna do them because we have them so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this take this off I'm gonna go get my special type uh, shaft type seal puller I got for like 12 13 bucks and then we're gonna take that seal out so let's take this off and then let's do that first and then we'll go down there we'll take off uh, take off this stuff down here and then change that seal out and then uh, we'll do the water pump 14 millimeter down there for the pulley so I compared the new belt this is the new belt with the old belt and it, it was the, it's the same it's the correct belt and then I looked at the water pump and something important when you're taking the water pump off look at the new one you got one two three four and then five and then see I gotta take that one off it's a 14 millimeter right there I gotta take that off it's a 14 millimeter head you see it it's this one right there I gotta take that one off something I forgot to do take that bracket off so we know we got uh, only five on this to take off and then we want to put a bucket underneath because uh, it's gonna leak a little bit of fluid actually we should just take the fluid out of the uh, radiator let that leak out for a minute and then we come over here and bust this out and then uh, the seals right here there was a little plastic cover held on with one bolt right here 10 millimeter hand bolt little plastic cover and here's the seal right here seals are used in between rotating metal this is not rotating and this is rotating this is to the uh, camshaft so this is rotating this is not rotating inside of here is oil outside of here you do not want oil so what a seal does is seals it from the oil coming out well what happens is oil gets compression gases pushed down through the rings and then the oil starts to deteriorate and get acidic because of the acidic gases and then the, the acidic oil starts to eat away at the seal because it's like rubber so that's why eventually these things no matter how many times you change your oil eventually these things go out and, and you want to change them and uh, you could come in here with the screwdriver you don't want to damage especially any of this right here because this is rotating if it's rotating you scratched it then it's gonna leak oil through here the oil is gonna drop up on the timing belt and then the oil will deteriorate the timing belt and it will break before it should 
so you want to make sure there's no oil that's one of the reasons we're doing this is because there is some oil there's an oil leak and we're worried about the timing belt breaking and I got this tool right here this tool specifically for doing this pulling this that's all it does is pull these oils uh, these seals and this thing hooks in there this hooks in there